your friends and we got some special guests we're gonna go through the home buying process gonna help you guys understand a little bit more what it takes and what it involves so you can go get your house tomorrow that's right we're gonna first get pre-approved <laughs> <laughs> is that the first thing actually it is actually it is yeah how she can That's right. What if I know? I got everybody up. You got everybody up. I don't know anybody in my phone. Well, the winter has to be in this thing. So I'm going to be asking you all those questions. Getting all those answers. Uh-huh. You didn't want to tell, tell anybody. Okay. I need to know what I'm trying. Because I'm working with you. I'm going to have to fight the battle. You can't put me on the field. Without being properly set up. Okay. Right. You're going to talk about that. Y'all didn't know that, did you? I think I was just jumping the car and go see it, huh? Show me the camera. I'm going to invite your friends, get your happy hour drink. we about to get started. This is Ripple right here. <laughs> Ooh, this is strong. Ain't this strong? What you got? What's your strength Oh, yeah, man. I'm drinking. I'm drinking mine straight. Right. Straight. Hey, you don't miss this. <laughs> the sealed water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. What's up? Oh, what's up? Who you beans with? How you smoke trees? What's up, Will? How's everybody? What's up, Josh? I thought you were coming back. We definitely need to get with you so we can get you guys straight. You and, uh, you and Rob. What's up, Tom? That's the song right there. That's the song. I know it. That's the song. All my people around. Yeah. What's up, Preston? 
Everybody needs hey, wait a chicken one he said. Where's chicken wings? We need some chicken wings. Oh, we're going to get some chicken. We're going to get some chicken. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So uh, we're going to get started soon. This song was not Mr. Jackson. This demo. Yeah, we're gonna, we gonna go get some chips. We're gonna get stuck. Now yeah, we're gonna go over the home buy process so you know what it takes. So you know you just can't go jump in the car and be like, oh, 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 oh. So, cool, cool, cool. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and get rid of that music. Everybody ready to learn? Oh, man. I should have said that out. What's up? Once again, I'm Cherry Woods. This is. Harriet Hawkins. And this is Rhonda Mayo Lewis. And welcome, welcome to the Power of Real Estate Happy Hour, guys. Today we're gonna to talk about the steps to um to buying your home. What you what's the process and what you need to do to go out and get a home. But these are the experts here. And so they're gonna chime in. I'm gonna ask some questions. We're gonna intermingle with if you have any questions, right? Just go ahead and, and type it in. And we try to get all your answer, questions answered. And um uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, let them introduce themselves. And I'm going to go find some chips to go with this happy hour, and I'll be right back. So go ahead and introduce yourself again. With, and I'll be right back. All right. All right. Hello again, everybody. Again, my name is Rhonda Mayo Lewis, and I'm a mortgage loan officer with Prime Lending. Um, I've been originating loans for um, about 22 years now. And I'm just happy to be here with such an expert today, actually, with two experts, Harriet. Hawkins and Carrie Woods. I'm happy to be partnering up with people who know what they're doing Absolutely. and who have the same mission in mind as I do, um, helping all the people all around me. Okay, so that everybody can be living and eating good. Isn't that oh, right, Harry? Definitely eating good and living. <laughs> good. Put people into a home so they can live good and be comfortable knowing that they have people who put them in a home that they can afford and they can be in there as long as they want to. One very important thing to keep mention of is that um, it's, it's, it's been proven that people who have invested in home ownership are also invested in their communities. And those people tend to um, keep up their property and um, tend to stay in the community and help uh, make sure that that community thrives. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, people take such pride in the home ownership. Yes, yes. You know, um, I always say it's the American dream, but if you don't do it the correct way, it can definitely become an American nightmare. And that's not what we want to have happen to you. Yes, so, yes. Um, a lot of folks think that people in this industry just want to get people in their house so that they can make money. But that's not true because I can't sleep well if I put anybody in a house that they can't afford or they're not happy with. So the ultimate goal is really to see people eating and living good and being comfortable. Mm -hmm. And too, this is a relationship business. If I treat someone that's right. wrong, they won't refer me. That's right. All that's right. right. Enough to get referrals. Oh, Carrie's got the chips. He's oh. opening up the bag. <laughs> Just to um, piggyback off of what Harriet said, um, one of the first questions I always ask clients when they come to me to purchase a home is, what is your maximum comfort level as far as a housing payment? And I'm always surprised at the fact that a lot of people don't know. They don't have that number in mind. You don't go to the lender and not know what your parameters are. Know what your parameters are. And that figure is not so, thanks, Carrie. That figure is not so much so that I can get you a loan that's going to have you up to your maximum, but just so that I can get you into a loan and have you looking at a sales price range that's not going to have you over your comfort level. Because when we go to closing, we want to be happy. And we want you to be happy as well so that you can feel comfortable knowing that you're not only going to get this house, but that you're going to keep it. Absolutely. Great. So. Cool. Let's start with the process. The process. Okay, cool. The first thing you want to do, right? The first thing you guys need to do, you probably can't see the board, is get a marker that works. <laughs> How about that? Pre approval. 
First step is to pre-approve. You need to know how much home you can afford. So you can't go out looking at that $400,000 house if you only qualify for $300,000. So that's the very, very first thing you need to do. You need before you, you go and talk to So if you talk to a realtor and they refuse to take you out, that's one of the reasons why. They need to know what you're looking for. That's you just right. can't go out. So the pre-approval process, what does that involve? Well, it should involve a lot. Okay. A lot of times it doesn't involve a lot, and that's why people <laughs> that's why people end up in situations where they find a house, uh -huh. they're all excited, they didn't, you know, took their mama by they had to see it, oh, wow. and they've already measured the windows for the drapes, and then their loan doesn't get approved. Mm. That's because they were not pre-approved for the mortgage. So the pre-approval involves working with someone like me who can um, look at and review all of your income and asset documents. So that includes your pay stubs, your W-2s, your tax returns in some cases. Mm -hmm. uh, we look at your assets. Um, so we're looking at your bank accounts to see how much money you have because part of getting pre-approved for a loan is making sure that you have the funds that you'll need to be able to go to closing. And the most important out of all of that is credit. Okay, so that's our new four letter word. That's really six letters, but credit. So people always ask, like, what it like what's the minimum score? What's the min well that depends on what kind of loan you're doing. Okay. That depends on a lot of things. So one very important thing I don't want you all to do is to rule yourself out based on your credit score. Okay? Don't rule yourself out. Talk to a lender. Talk to someone because even though your credit scores may be a little on the low range, mm -hmm. there may be some things that we can do to work on getting those scores up. So talk to the lender. Let them work with you to try to see what you can do to try to get those scores up. You may be in a situation where um, your credit may be great mm -hmm. and you may have um, a stable job, stable income, but you have no money saved. Mm -hmm. And the market that we're in right now, it's not really feasible to think that you're going to buy a house with no money. You need some money. And I can let Harriet talk about at what times and what instances you need that money. Oh, absolutely. Now, somebody just asked the question, sure. does TSP count? Now, the TSP is the thrift savings program for some of the government work. Yes. It counts as long as you worked in a branch that allows you to use it. Because I've had clients where... They have a TSP and they work for DC government, but they cannot use it. Okay, that's a that's a very good point. So let's not confuse um, TSP with just an overall retirement program. Right. So uh, overall retirement program could include TSP, which is thrift savings, which is what the federal government has. Mm -hmm. District government has their own retirement program that's called something different than TSP, mm -hmm. and then also people work for private. Um, private agencies, and they may have a 401k or some other type of retirement savings. Mm -hmm. Check with your retirement account manager to find out what are the terms of you being able to use those funds to purchase a home. So to answer your question out there, I don't know who that was that asked oh, Preston, that question. Preston, actually, Preston, 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 to Preston answer your question, yes, you can use um, funds from your TSP account as monies to go towards your purchase. We count that as your money because it is money that you saved up. So not only do we count that as your money, but the money that you have left, we count that as reserves. So when we look at a situation where a person has um, $10,000 in their account that they can use, mm -hmm. and then they still have another forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, that makes that file pretty strong. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. cool. So you got some money in that TSP. So contact them people down Absolutely. at the TSP. And speaking of that, you got other programs to go along with that TSP. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So right now, um, the county, not the county, the state of Maryland uh -oh. has a very good program out. Um, and what they're doing now is the program is ongoing, so it never runs out of funds. What they do, though, is they do offer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Yes. Whoa, hold on. Guys, listen to this. Listen to this. <laughs> whoa, listen to this. Now, slow down and say that again. I'm you sorry. said that they never run out of funds. That is correct. What's the name of their program? That's the Maryland Mortgage Program. I'm sorry. Yeah, MMP. Never run yes. out of funds. Yes. They always got yes. money for you. Go yes, ahead, ahead, yes. And program. so um, you have to be an approved lender. 
um, mm -hmm. which we happen to be. Oh, and I'm also one of their elite uh, loan officers. So I do a lot of programs with them. They actually send me referrals and leads uh, people oh, who inquire about that program. Wow. That's how many loans I do with them. That's sweet. So That's that sweet program best. never runs out of money, um, but they do have um, ongoing incentives. So the okay. incentives and the help that they offer changes. Okay. So right now um, they have a grant, grant program. Mm. So the grant program, remember, a grant, is a grant. It's a gift. It's given. And you don't have to pay that back. Never pay it back. You don't have to pay that. Maryland got money. They give them away. That you don't have to. That pay you back. don't have to pay back. Oh, this is sweet. Well, I'm but they Keep do talking. have guidelines. Keep yes, talking. I want to yes, hear more about yes. this. So they have monies that they will give you for down payment and closing costs. What? Uh, yes. And what they'll and what they will contribute is four percent of your loan amount. That's really? yes. That's a lot. Wow. And in addition to that, they also have an additional incentive that I think is running through December. It was going to end September the 15th, but they've extended it mm -hmm. through December for an additional $1,500 grant. So you can get a 4% 4, 4 of your loan amount plus an additional $1,500 grant towards your down payment and closing. I have a question for you, Rhonda. Yes. With the 4% and the $1,500 mm -hmm. um, now, with um, the closing calls, is if it's needed, does the seller still have the capability of having a contribution as well? That's an excellent question. Yes, they do. Oh, wow. So depending cool. upon what type of loan the client is doing, the seller can pay up to 6% oh, of the wow. sales Six price. Percent. Yes. Six and four yes. is 10. Six and four is 10. Six and four is 10. And so wow. in this situation, it is possible to get in the home with very little money. Right. Now, in our market, let me ask you guys, in our market, how feasible is it for a, a buyer to get 6% closing help? Uh, not in this market, it's, not, it's <laughs> not very feasible. So remember that while you are able to do it, you might not actually be able to do it. <laughs> yeah. While it's possible, it might not be probable. Yes. How about that? Now, yeah. I, have a question, I know a lot of people out there have their wheels spinning and they're like, okay, if they give me 4% and by chance and the seller gives me 6% and I don't need all that money, I get to take that money home. Explain to them about that. Well, we what, can't take money from the table. Anymore. What happens is in a situation... <laughs> If you if you find yourself to be one of those few fortunate ones out there, which I haven't seen in, in a number of years, right. um, where everything is being covered, the down payment and the closing costs, everything is being covered, you still need money because you can't write an offer, right? right. Without having some money, you it have to put up deposit. you have to put up an earnest earnest money deposit. And how much do they usually have you put up for um, that? Usually like one percent. 1% of, of the sales sales, oh, sales price. Then you're going to have to get the house appraised. So we have to get the house appraised to determine that the house is worth at least what you're buy, buying it for. That can run you anywhere from Home 450 inspection. to 550 Yeah. And you have to get an inspection. How much does that cost? Uh, roughly about 300 to 450 Okay. So you do have to have some money up front even to proceed with making an offer on a home. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. Cool. Uh, that's some great information. I hope you guys take notes on this. Uh, Absolutely. Man. Yeah, because four percent that is. Wonderful. Oh, but let me tell you about the other part of that. That's uh -huh. the most exciting to me. Well, the four percent is pretty. Is pretty exciting. Yeah, pretty exciting. But the program also offers something called a mortgage credit certificate. And what that is is um, it's a certificate that's issued to the buyer at closing which allows the buyer to claim as a tax credit up to 25% of the total interest that they pay oh, on the wow. loan what? every single year for as long as they have the loan, not to exceed oh, wow. $2,000. That's awesome. So let me tell you how that works. Um, everybody knows that when you buy a house, you get a mortgage loan. Right. Your first few years of payments is going mostly towards what? Interest. Interest. Okay. So on a, let's say on a $210,000 house, the first year that you make all your payments, mm -hmm. 
you're probably paying ten to eleven thousand dollars in interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with that mortgage credit certificate, you can take 25% of that and claim that as a tax credit. Oh, wow. So if it's $10,000, 25% of that is $2,500, but they'll only let you go up to $2,000. Okay. So the way a tax credit works is it works differently than a write-off. So a write-off, you'll still get to write off the other 75% of that interest to reduce your tax liability because that's one of the benefits of owning a home um, but you'll also get that tax credit so if you didn't have the tax credit and you were going to get back say four thousand dollars now you get back six thousand it's that's flat sweet. money right yeah. in your hand and you have right that for the as for the life of the loan so that tax credit carries with you for the life of the loan so when you go to settlement i tell all my clients i take that paper out and tell them laminate it because you need it. <laughs> Save it. That's right. Save it. Because this is this is money every year. Now, now Preston had another question. Hey, there. Preston. Uh, do you need a credit check? Is a credit check part of the process when you're going through buying a house? Is a credit check part of the process? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, it's such an important part of it <laughs> that that's one of the first things we do is to pull your credit. So the credit information we get, Preston, is from all three credit agencies. So we'll know right away where your scores are, but also more importantly, just what your overall credit profile looks like at that time. Okay. So that I can determine if there's some things that you need to do that we can do kind of fast, because sometimes we can do something called a rescore that we can get back in like three to five business days. Sometimes um, a person may be in a situation where they have you know, a lot of credit issues and we need to refer them to a home ownership counseling agency that can hold their hand and kind of walk them through um, figuring out what to do to get their credit on track and also how to manage their money. Sweet, mm -hmm. sweet. So you definitely do need a credit check. So you need a credit check and you can use your TSP. So guys, yes. if you have any more questions as we go on, just definitely get them in the box. So Absolutely. the first step is to pre-approve. Did we cover everything on the pre-approval process? I think we did. Okay, cool. So guys, take notes. So pre If we didn't, just let us know. <laughs> so after you get pre-approved, what do you do? After you get pre-approved, that's when you find the agent. You sit down with the agent and you do a, um, a buyer's consultation, right? Buyer's consultation. So after you get pre-approved, you know, you got that letter say, hey, you, you qualify for this amount. You definitely going to do a buyer's consultation. A buyer's consultation, when you sit down with, with, with the agent. Right now, Prater. You sit down with the agent. Excuse me. And, they, and they, they explain the whole process to you, and you go with what's called an agency agreement. You want to talk about the agency agreement? Right. So at the buyer's consultation, what you uh, do is you go over agency agreement. An agency agreement is where you and the agent sign an agreement to work together. Okay. Um, and also under that agency agreement, that buyer's consultation, you also work with the agent and give them a list of the criteria of the type of home that you want to you want to live in. I usually ask the type of home, the area, what are your must haves, what are uh, the things that you are kind of okay. I can negotiate with that on, and then we schedule um, an ongoing time and a date that we meet weekly to go out and look at home. Now with the um the AC, the AC gear, is it gonna cost me anything to sign up with this agent to have them go out and show me a house? Well, it may cost you a admin fee that you you pay up front or mm -hmm. you may pay it at the time that you close. It depends on that situation with that agent. Is so getting a credit check on the it's no good. Online credit check or credit check online. Getting the credit I check can online. address stress that. Thank okay. you for that. So a lot of times um, clients will come to me and say, "Well, you don't need to pull my credit because um, I've signed up for a service that gives me my credit <laughs> and gives me my credit scores." So the one very important thing I want to mention with that is that 
Number one, we need a mortgage credit report, okay? okay? Which is very different from the consumer reports that you get from the um, companies that offer them, like the free credit and, you know, all of those agencies use a very different credit model uh -huh. than a mortgage than a mortgage credit report. Okay. So those um, scores can be skewed. And um, they're never what we actually get. Sometimes they're most most times they're higher. Uh, Sometimes they're even lower. So again, like I said, don't count yourself out. Allow someone to take a look at your information so that you can at least know where you stand. Um, because information is is powerful. Knowledge is powerful. And you know, I I always say that there's not a person out here that wants a house that can't get a house. Some of you can get one right now. Some of you, it'll be three months, some six, some we need to really sit down and figure out how to change some spending habits, okay. how to change some um, buying habits, um, how to change some money management skills, maybe even teach some money management skills to get to that point. But if it's something that you want, you can get it. Cool, Did you guys, you hear that? If you want a house, there's nothing stopping you. There's a way. It might not happen now, but it can happen. There's a way Absolutely. to get that house. Cool. So first one, remember, you're going to get pre-approved. Mm -hmm. You're going to do the um, the consultation with the agency. and buy a consultation. Buy a consultation with the agents. Because this is the thing, guys, with real estate agents. You know, they, this is how they earn their living. So you about that pre-approval, they don't know what you qualify for. So you can go out and you can find a house in the 300 400 whatever price range it is and go back and say write an offer but they can't get that offer to the to the to the seller because the seller's not going to accept it because they don't even know if you qualify so okay. that's what, you know you're wasting your time and you're wasting the agent's time so don't put the pressure on the agent or don't get mad at the agent if the agents don't take you out they gotta know exactly where to take you what what range what price and what what house to look for so that agent get with an agent figure out for uh, Figure out how that agent work, do the consultation, see if you guys going to work together. You want to mm -hmm. speak on that? How do you, you know, with the agent working together with the agents? Because you, you got to be able to mesh with that agent back. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Have a chip, um, sure. It's a customer service yeah. business. So, you know, you're the client and I'm the agent. So I'm definitely there to accommodate you. I'm there to find out what you want. And over time, we end up building a relationship because most of my clients, um, it's a lasting relationship from the very first client I've probably sold a property to to now because those clients, what they do is they become your family, you know, your real estate family. And if they're a first time home buyer, they end up coming back to you for a second time or referring their family and their friends. So it behooves us to make sure that you're happy. So I always try to know exactly what you're looking for so that again you don't I don't waste your time and you don't waste my and I give you realistic expectations of what's out there in the market because a lot of people they'll want that beautiful colonial with five bedrooms and three full <laughs> baths and half a bath with the basement and that the sounds real nice. Yeah. And like, okay, I don't want to spend over two twenty five. Right. Like, you know, I'm not gonna find that in the DMV area. Right. And then they'll right. get upset. But you know, I always want to be honest and not mislead anyone. So right. Very that's point. important because you want to be able to trust the person that's your realtor. And I want to be able to be comfortable with the person that I'm working for. Because if I'm, you're not happy with me and I'm not happy with you, it's not going to be a great relationship. Right. Cool. So, guys, you understand how that works. you got to find an agent that you can trust. So the next step, right? You got pre-approved. You got your buyer's consultation. Now we're going to go do what? We're going to go preview some homes. Oh. Now, that's, when, that's when you get in the car. That's when the agent's going to put mm -hmm. you in the car. That's, you know, you go do the preview some homes. Mm -hmm. and, and and how does that work? Do you just give them a list of houses or you say, go there, go there, let me know which one works? How does that, how does that well, work? How does that works, process? Uh, in that bar's consultation like where I find out the criteria of the type of, the type of home you want, the area that you want to live in, um, your style of house, and all your must-haves. Then what I do is I set up um, a search on the multiple listing service, which is called Matrix, and that comes to you via email, and you can access access it by your laptop, phone, um, and also we have a um, 
app called Home Home Snap that also send them a copy of that. So that starts coming out to you every time my home matches your search. And then what you do is you note the PG number down or the address, and then we go form a list and we set a date and we go look at houses. All right, all right. And let me see if I can oh. that app too. So. Okay. Home snap. Home snap. So after yeah. we preset after. Okay. Preview all home. right. So you previewed the home. So once you preview the homes, now guess what's going to happen, guys. You're going to find something you like, right? You're going to find something you like. This one is starting to get it. like, oh, man, I like that. Now, this, let's go right off. Let's go. I want this house. Now, I've been seeing people was like, you know, let me go home and sleep on Let me think about it and come back two or three days later. And this house has been on the market for, for weeks. And all of a sudden, when you like it, the next day is gone. So we're going to write a strong off. You want to talk about writing off and both, maybe both of you can chime in I on this? I think there's a very important word in there that you need to mention. Strong. Strong. Writing a strong, strong off. That's right. That's right. And so what does that mean? Yeah, what does strong, that mean? What is as opposed to just writing an offer. Exactly. Explain that. What is a strong off compared to all? Like, it's, explain that to them. Say, a I want that house. Offer. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain a strong offer like this. Strong. People are, your client, they're approved for 400 Okay. Okay, the house is three fifty. Mm hmm It may have been on there for three days. It's a house that they absolutely love. And they're like, you know what? I want to negotiate this because, you know, we always want a deal. Mm -hmm. So then like, yeah. I want to negotiate this. <laughs> so I already usually know the cost. Um, so it's three fifty. It's price right because that seller wants to sell their house. So when I tell the client, I said, you want to give them your strongest and your best offer because if you love it, somebody else loves that house too. Mm -hmm. So if you want to negotiate and you um, send them a low ball offer, mm -hmm. And they're going to get like 10 offers in, and they're going to go with their highest and their best offer. And you have to think if you want to always give that person the best offer because most people have a mortgage on their home, so they have to pay off that uh, their mortgage. They have to pay both agents because you don't pay the agent. The seller always pays the agent, and then they have to pay taxes. So I always say do not bull crap around with your offer. Give your strongest and your best offer now. And when it's a seller's market, it's not the time to negotiate. And if it's the house that you absolutely love, then go for it. So you right. want to do a strong offer. And with that offer, you want to have it accompanied with your earnest money deposit. So you need 1% of that sales price to write an offer. I cannot write an offer for you. I would love to unless you have that check in my hand so I can present it. Because if you don't, like pretty much like the pre-approval, that uh, sellers are not going to take your office offer is serious. And what is an earnest money deposit? Like what what is that for, Harry? An uh, earnest money deposit is like a good faith check saying, Hey, I love your house. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Here's my earnest money deposit showing how serious I am. Let's make a move. Oh, okay. All right. And All actually right. it's it's part of contract law. It's called consideration. Without yeah. consideration, you don't have a contract. And one thing about the earnest deposit too, you know, if you know you got money, that money gets that whatever that deposit is, it gets counted towards your credit, it towards your uh, for closing. Absolutely. So if you can put down a higher earnest deposit, that shows that you're really serious about getting that house. So that um, would make it stronger. That would yeah, make, make that your offer even stronger. stronger. Okay. Stronger. Okay. Stronger. All right. So cool. We're gonna write a strong offer. We're gonna write a strong. <laughs> so once you write that strong offer, right? They're gonna present that offer. And once they present that offer, three things can happen. They can either accept your offer, they can counter your offer, or they can reject your offer, right? So let's talk about this. Let's talk about once you present that offer, right? We went out and previewing. Now, what if they what if they accept my offer? What well, let's talk about that last. What if they counter off? What is a counter? A counter offer is you made the offer for two fifty. Okay. You know they like your offer, they want to move forward, but they want to change some things. Maybe they want you to increase your earnest money deposit from five hundred to a thousand. Maybe they want to change the closing date. Maybe you ask for three percent closing help, and now they want to just give you one and a half percent. So those are some things they counter. It's not that they're rejecting your offer; they're just countering to say, "Hey, I like your offer, but." 
if you can meet me on these terms, then we can move forward with this um, offer with some changes. Okay. Now, what if they just straight out reject my offer? What happens if I say, you know what? No. Well, what would make, make them just reject the offer? They may have what accepted a, a better offer. Oh, okay. So okay. Sometimes they just don't like the offer. Okay. Some people don't counter. Um, a lot of times they just flat out reject. I'll ask the agent, is there any particular reason? Uh -huh. They may give a reason and they may not. So okay. keep that in wow. mind. You know, remember back in the last, the last, it was writing a strong offer. A lot of times, guys, if you write below what they ask, and they might feel insulted. So they right. may not counter that. You like, they may not answer at all. They just straight out reject your offer. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times they feel like, oh, that's an insult. We not, we had our house on the market. We know it's worth this much. You gonna write us an offer that we're not even gonna entertain it. So they can just go and straight out reject your offer. You won't hear from them. At all. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So now. If they don't counter, they don't reject, they actually accept the offer. Now, if they accept the offer, should I jump up and down? Can I can I pack up my truck and move in? Don't pack up a truck yet. <laughs> <laughs> don't pack up a truck. Don't give you 30 days. Right. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Don't do any of those things yet. That's you very important. You said don't give your 30 day notice. Don't give your notice. Right. Because I've had folks get <laughs> their offer accepted and they say, you know what? Should I get my notice? And I'm like, not yet. Because right. really anything can happen. Anything before can happen. You actually That's settle. right. That's right. On that property. Now, now, one of the things that shouldn't happen <laughs> is your loan fall through, right? <laughs> because we did that first step very thoroughly. <laughs> We've gotten a pre-approval, so you shouldn't have to worry about your loan. If you talk to somebody and they say they almost got the closing and then their loan got denied, that's an issue. They, you know, wasn't a, a thorough enough pre-approval. So make sure that your loan, loan officer takes their time with that. Make sure you give them everything, everything, everything. One of the things that people try to do is they try to hide stuff from me, right? <laughs> Like so, that extra income. <laughs> yeah. Tell your loan officer everything. You're like the lawyer, right? I'm like, I'm like the, I'm yeah, I'm like your lawyer. I'll fight your battle for you. Cause I've talked to you. I know you. I know your story. Right. The underwriter who reviews your information, all they see is paper. So tell me everything. Anything that needs to be addressed, let's address it up front. Now, let's not leave any questions for them. One thing I need to tell you, if I have ten thousand dollars in my mattress yes. and then i decide to put it in my bank account i definitely need to ask you anything like that before. absolutely absolutely please that do not your take dish. your mattress money and deposit <laughs> it in the bank give it to your mama please and we'll let her give it to you as a gift That's don't a gift. take your mattress money or you mentioned gift. yes should i go get that gift before i speak to you or should i wait and let you know the scenario about the gift that's a good deposit. question so one of the things that um is part of you being pre-approved is um money so you have to have the funds so i can't pre-approve you unless you have the money so if you're supposed to get a gift get the gift get the money put the money in the bank we'll document the gift properly and we'll use that money because I have I have had situations where people thought they were getting a gift and then they quit the man or the man quit her. Okay. And there and there went our gift. Question and we think we're going to close it, but we didn't get the money. Get yes, yes, yes. Yeah, question for you. Girl, suppose my sister works at the strip club and she get a bag of money. Can I use that money for a gift? Huh. Um, you can use her money as a gift. Yes, she. If, if you can use her money as a gift, we just have to document that money coming to you properly. <laughs> so, depending upon, you know, her money, she made her money, and if she wants to give it to you as a gift, the guidelines say she can give it to you as a gift. We're not overly concerned about how she got the money, but we just have to document how you get the money. Okay. So you wouldn't have to see her bank statements and with them. Well, that's a good question, and that depends upon what type of loan they're doing. So some loans um, require us to document where the to document by way of um, bank account information the donor's ability to give you the money. Some loans don't. 
So it just depends on the loan, depends on the guidelines. That's why we do all of that up front, because we don't want those last minute things coming up. Now, we've got three quick questions real quick. Uh, sure. The person had a, a question. What, what does the average Rambler run in Maryland? Um, the average cost of a Rambler in Maryland, it depends on what county, but in and Prince then George's. And what city, too. Yeah, the county sure in the city. it would be different in Bowie than it would be in right. Brooklyn or some, some other areas. Sure. Well, yeah. What do you think the average is? Average Rambler is going to be at least about 250 you think? I'd say about 250 to maybe three. Depending on again the location, right. the county, the, the city, condition, yeah. the condition. Does that play into it? The yes. size, the mm-hmm. size, and uh, DC. Jesus, that's yeah. all. <laughs> <Another ball. laughs> so we stick to Maryland. <laughs> and how often do they re- reject your offer? How often do they reject your offer? Well, actually, guys, we're in what we call a a, a, a buyer, a seller's market, and pretty much a seller's market where we have more buyers. I mean, we have more sellers than buyers. So your offers get rejected pretty often. What you'll see, you'll see a lot of multiple offers on these properties, especially in D.C., you know, because it's flooded with buyers and less inventory. So we got more more, uh, more buyers than we got inventory. So that's why they say write a strong offer. So you, you're going to see your offer probably rejected a lot of times because a lot of people, sometimes they write over asking price just to get that house because if they see something they really like, it's going to be now. Keep in mind when you are looking too, you're competing with a lot of people out here. You're competing with a lot of buyers. So your chances of your offer not being accepted, somebody else winning a bid higher than you, is all going to depend on your financial capability. So it, it does. You, it's not the rejection part. It's just a lot of times you just get outbidded on. So right, very often right, right. Just, I see um, Gary Scott has a question. Um, he wants to know what type of credit score is needed. So um, d- it depends upon the type of loan that you're doing. Okay. So the absolute minimum credit score that we will take is a 600. Um, but with that 600, when you go from 600 to 619, there's some other requirements added to that. So um, on on most of our other loans, it's 620. For the first-time buyer programs, they have their own um, minimum credit score requirements um, depending upon the type of loan that you do with them. One of them is 640 and the other one is 660. So again, if I have a situation where I have a client and they're at a 620 and I know that they need money, I'm going to be working with them to get them to a 640 so that we can at least look at using a program that's going to help them with money if that's their situation. Now, what if I got like $400,000, but I got like a 200 credit score? Okay, so if you have $400,000 and a 200 score, you probably need to buy your house outright. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to buy that $600,000. <laughs> I want to buy that $600,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So hey, I gotta buy the house. I can't right. save my money. <laughs> so cool. All right, right. I gotta right. buy right. the house. Then. Yeah, but I got a document where that money's coming from anyway, right? If you're paying paying cash? Yeah, especially. Yeah. I don't I don't know. Do you? Yes, you yes. Do. Anything okay. over ten thousand dollars, guys, you go do That's especially with the new homeland security stuff, you just can't uh, go in and start dropping that type of money on the house. But you can also fund some of these homes with your your insurance policy. So if you guys got whole life policies, you want to look into using that to actually buy properties too. I so, hope I answered your question, Gary. Okay, yeah, let me yeah. know. So cool. So we, we got the offer accepted, right? Now we got the offer accepted. What's the next? What we need? What we need to do next? We got the offer set. Well, next we need to get an appraisal done. Ah. So this is something that the lender does. So a lot of people ask, well, can I just get my own appraisal done? Right. So let's first talk about can what I an appraisal comps? is. Can you use comps? What's a comp? Comparison. Can I use comparisons for them? I know my neighbor's house sold for foreign, so mine's sold for foreign. No, you can't do that. So what happens is, is that when you get a mortgage loan. The lender is actually investing with you in your home, okay? (laughs) Isn't that right? (laughs) So the lender wants to make sure that the money that they're loaning... Oh, by the way, uh, Frank, Fred, this is not professional. This is off the cuff. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry um, about eating the chips. I'm I'm sorry about that. (laughs) We're just just, um, trying to give some good information 
and um, just trying to, you know, supply that information in a very fun matter. So I apologize for that. Um, so getting back to the um, appraisal, the appraisal um, is done by the uh, lender. So the lender actually um, hire somebody. The lender usually has a list of certified appraisers that they actually send out to determine uh, what the value of the house is because the lender wants to make sure that the house is worth at least, number one, what you're buying it for. Okay, so what happens when you, you're buying a house for $250,000 and the um, appraisal comes in at two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. The first thing you do is turn to your realtor and say thank you, <laughs> because your realtor just made you ten thousand dollars. So now you have ten thousand dollars of um, equity in the home. So that's great. You just bought a house for less than it's worth. So the real question is, what happens if the house appraises low? So you have a sales price at two hundred and fifty thousand and the house appraises for 240,000. What that does is it opens the contract back up because as part of your offer that you make on the house, your offer to purchase that house for $250,000 is based on that appraising, it appraising or being worth at least $250,000, okay? So that opens the offer back up and then you have to renegotiate, right? You have to determine from them um, from the seller if they're willing to uh, still sell you the house at what the house is worth. And what usually happens then? Generally, we, the agent goes to, the buyer agent goes to the seller's agent and they tell them, hey, we have an appraisal that came back at two forty. dollars that's $10,000 less, and we would like to know if it's open to negotiate for that two forty. dollars mm -hmm. Most cases, the seller comes back and they agree to the price, which they may agree and say, hey, if it's at that price, then I'm going to pay less than the um, closing cost that I agreed to. Or they may not. They may say $240, let us go with it and keep it moving so we can close. Or they may say, well, hey, I can't do this. Um, I have to sell it at the $250. Does your seller want to pay ten thousand dollars i mean your buyer want to pay that ten thousand dollar difference and in most cases a great agent is going to say no because why would you buy a house that is undervalued right so that 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 260 where you're going in with ten thousand dollars equity if you pay the ten thousand then you're going in with negative back because you actually paid out your pocket right so you bought a house that's not worth the paper that is written in. now with the appraisal now if they say no you know i'm not going to lower my price to the appraised value now what happens to my appraised money can i use this money for the next house if we go back out look the appraisal yeah. that's a question for me huh? no no unfortunately you can because the lender has to pay the appraiser Oh. So um, an appraisal fee is a third party fee. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a fee that we have to collect up front because we have to pay the appraiser. Mm -hmm. So if something happens, you pay for the appraisal on the house, um, then and the house doesn't appraise or, or the deal falls through, mm -hmm. then you still have to get another appraisal. A lot of times we may give you some concession on that because, you know, that's not the buyer's fault. And we definitely want to work with you um, as you work through that situation. Um, and that's why a lot of times, even though we've um, talked about the appraisal, a lot of times I usually don't order the appraisal until you've had this home done. Ah, <laughs> home inspection. Ah, okay, this is where you find out is that it's a uh, house that's going to stand forever or is it just going to fall apart after you move in? How important is a home inspection and do I have to have it? Can I say no, I don't want that home inspection? A home inspection is very, very important because that's when you find out all about what's going on on the inside of the house, under the house, uh, in the attic, mm -hmm. in the places that we cannot see. Because you can look at a house and it can look beautiful, but it may have a lot of skeletons in there. So a home inspection is very important, and I've had clients say, "Why well, I need a home inspection if I'm doing an appraisal. Appraisal determines the value of your house. That's right. A home inspection 
determines the health of your house. So it's very, very important. And you can say you don't want it because it's totally up to you, but it's on your best interest because if down the line something happens with that house, it's nothing that you can say because you did not get a home inspection to cover it. A home inspection is your warranty and it's your way out in case it's something detrimental going on in that house. Like it may be a foundation problem that we can't see because I'm a, a realtor, but I'm not a home inspection. There's things that I can look at, but I can't even advise and give you an expert opinion because I'm not an expert in the home inspection field. And um, also a lot of people buy new homes and they don't want to get a home inspection. A home inspection is even more important buying a new home just because it's built brand new from the ground. Builders make mistakes every day. And there was a documentary on, uh, I want to say Fox, maybe about six months ago, where all the different builders, um, the clients were upset, the buyers were upset because they now had all these issues going down the line. It was nothing that they can do. And one of the first question was one, they did not have a home inspection. Wow. The second was they did not have an agent because people go into these developments and they buy from the sales agent. That sales agent works for that buyer. It's her job to sell as many houses that she can to people who walk in. They, you, they, you do not have any buyer agency representation when you walk into that development. That person does not work for you. So you should always have your own agent so they can tell you things That's like very important. get a home inspection for your protection. Very important. Yep. So guys, I hope you heard that. Even on new construction, because remember these guys are building houses in the masses. It's all the numbers. Right. Game and it doesn't cost you anything. That builder pays an agent. That builder pays the agent's commission. And I actually um I actually seen where they actually they the rafters they put, they actually, you know, break those and try to mother them together right. or sister them together. They do all types of stuff they try to hide. And once you got their roof on and you don't get that home inspector, you'll never know until a problem come up. And then the insurance company may not cover it five or six years down the line. Or I've seen in the wintertime, too, when they backfill in these, these, these properties, they back, instead of using dirt, it's snow. Right, and, and that so, snow wow. melts. Yeah, and that snow melts. You know, come April and in, in, in July, that snow starts to melt. Now you got foundation problems. So you wow. know, that's some of the things you need to look out for. So a home inspection is very, very important. Now, I got a question for you, Delinda. Sure. Sure. Is there anything on the home inspection that can that can ruin my loan? Well, so um, when you're purchasing a home, the lender is um, looking to make sure that the home is in livable condition. So we do that by looking at the appraisal. We don't generally look at a home inspection report. However, if you're purchasing the home and you have a home inspection done, um, know that when the appraisal goes in, when, when the appraiser goes in, the appraiser is going to be checking to make sure, even though it's not a home inspection, they're going to be checking to make sure that all the major components of the house are in working order, such as plumbing and heating and electrical and um, heating and air conditioning systems. So they're going to be making sure of that um, if there's anything noticeable going on with the roof, there's any watermarks in the ceiling, they're going to be making sure that, you know, the roof is in good condition or is in working condition as far as they can see. Appraiser is not going to go up on the roof of your house. They're not going to go <laughs> up a, up in the attic. So if it's something visible that they can see, they're also checking for mold. If there's any mold, mold is a major issue with a house as it relates to being able to get financing on it. So when they go in there and they see those situations, if those types of situations come up, on a home inspection report, they need to be addressed. Gotcha. Now, question, uh, Preston had another quick question. Can you borrow from your retirement? So, Preston, yes, Preston, you can. You well, you it is possible. Not all retirement accounts, though, will allow you to borrow funds. Like I know um, the DC government um, retirement accounts, I don't think allow you to borrow funds. So, what you'll want to do in that situation, Preston, is check with your um, your account manager for your retirement. If you have a TSP, you can certainly borrow monies from your TSP. So uh, you can check with your account manager, find out what you have available to borrow. Doesn't mean you have to borrow it all. And as long as you have at least the amount that you're borrowing left in your account after you use it, we don't even count that payment 
against you because you're paying yourself back. So it's like you took you borrowed money from yourself mm -hmm. and you're going to pay yourself back. So we don't even count that as a debt. Cool. And Frederick had a question, too. How many months do I need to move from a rental apartment buying and moving into a condo or a home? That's a very good question. So, um, Frederick, the way I would answer that is everybody's situation is going to be different. So um, you can use someone like me to help you determine um, a time frame for yourself. So it would depend on where you are right now as far as credit. It would depend on where you are as far as savings, um, if you have stability on your job, if you need some more time on your job. So everybody's situation is different. Um, I'd be more than happy to speak to you, to talk to you, um, to get your credit information pulled, review your income and asset documents so that we can at least have a plan. If there's a situation where I think you need some um, hand holding and uh, somebody to actually sit down and work with you on getting your credit repair or getting you to a point where you are credit worthy for a mortgage. I can refer you to a housing counseling agency. Otherwise, I can work with you myself. So I would be more than happy to do that for you. Cool. Cool. So we've done the home inspections, everything cool. What's our next step? We want to. Go to that title company, baby. We're getting to work. Go to the title company, Home and Homeowners Insurance. Man, this is so important. Yes. This is really important. Yes. I, even on the new homes, you uh, a lot of people, you know, I seem like oh, they they don't want to pay this fee. It's like only what, what about three hundred dollars or something. No, this is this is the insurance. I think you're talking about a warranty. Right. No, I'm talking about the homeowners insurance. Yeah. Home, oh, homeowners insurance is usually more than three hundred dollars. Twenty three hundred. Twenty three. Yeah, yeah, about twenty three thousand. Yeah, yeah. So homeowners insurance. So you it's cannot important. go to closing without having a homeowners insurance policy in place. Okay. So the house has to be insured. What does it insure? It protects the it protects the lender because the lender is always looking out <laughs> for their money, right? right? So. The lender is not going to let you go to closing on a house without having insurance because if the house burns down to the ground, chances are you're not going to make any more mortgage payments. <laughs> so the house has to be insured, okay? In case of a fire, tree falls on the house, somebody comes to your house, slips and falls, the policy is put in place and it covers you, the policy that you get in place covers you for a year. And then every year after that, you have monies in your escrow account, which is part of your mortgage payment. And so the lender sends the money out every year to renew your policy. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you have, this is something you have to have. And homeowners insurance, um, let's say on a $250,000 house should run you somewhere around 900 to a thousand dollars a year. Okay. Yeah. 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 About 900 to a thousand dollars a year. So you can expect to pay about $90 a month as part of your uh, mortgage payment um, to for your homeowner's insurance. And again, you're paying that every month as part of your mortgage payment, just like your taxes. Okay. So we figure out how much your taxes are. We factor that into your payment. So that every six months when the county's looking for their money, they're going to send you a bill. You make sure the mortgage company has a copy of that bill so that they can pay it because that's already factored in to your payment. Cool. So as long as you have a mortgage on a home, the mortgage company is going to pay that bill because it's factored into your loan. If you right. own your house free and clear, then you're responsible. Definitely get, you don't, yeah, get your insurance. Don't Absolutely. cancel your insurance. I've seen a lot of people when they, once they pay their home off, they actually... Excuse me, they cancel the insurance and think they save, and then if something happened, a fire or something, you're really not saving anything because Absolutely. that house burned down. You're still responsible for the taxes on that land. So you just took a huge loss and you just invested, what, 15, 30 years into a home with Absolutely. a mortgage and just yeah. let it go? Yeah. So never let your homeowner's insurance go delinquent. It's really very important that, That's you, right. that you have it. Because if, if you do, the lender will put something on it called <laughs> forced place insurance. So. <laughs> I sound like the bad guy, don't I? <laughs> the lender will make sure that that house is insured. So they will they will put insurance on that house, and it won't be eleven hundred dollars. It won't be a thousand dollars. It'll probably be double that. Yes, yes. Be double yes. What, they, yes. Uh, what, what they what they what they do. So you got your insurance. Keep you your house your, up. Uh, you got your appraisal. Mm -hmm. Now, by that time, uh, by that time, by the time maybe you should have the loan approval back by then, right? 
That's oh, me. yes, 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 yes. So, so once you write your offer and your offer gets accepted, um, we're, we're already going through um, a process of letting the underwriter review your file with the appraisal. They're going to review your appraisal report. They're going to review all your updated information um, and approve your loan. And so at that point, we're, we're getting ready to start gearing things up to go to closing. Okay, that's when all the fun happens. Actually. That's when you go to title company. What another insurance <laughs> that you guys need? You need title, title insurance. insurance. Same thing with the new builders. You know, just because it, that's land, the house is new, you think you don't need title insurance, and well, something could always come up. You don't know how they acquired that land. It could come up years later and it cause you to have to go to court. I actually seen this on a new builder where uh -huh. it, it cost somebody like thousands of dollars, which was crazy, oh, and they waived their, their title insurance. So what you want to do? You definitely want the title insurance because uh, whether you buy a new construction or you buy one that somebody already lived in before, it's very important that you get that title insurance. Right, for your protection. That's another for, it's your, for your protection. protection. It's for you your protection. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. people come up and it may be a lien that someone had who on a um, previously owned house. They may have had that lien like three buyers ago and something comes up. At least you're protecting when you have title insurance, and maybe something comes up with a new home with the builder. As long as that's your protection, that you're covered. Yep. So you you, you got the title insurance, and title and the title company gonna do what they call a title search. They're gonna make sure that that title can actually transfer where there's no liens or, or encumbrances upon that title, so you know nobody has to come back and make a claim to to that property. So that's right. So once all that's done, what's the next step? We we moving along. We moving along. What's our next step? <laughs> Next, we're going to do a ah, walkthrough. Walkthrough. So we've done the appraisal. We've done the home inspection. Mm -hmm. So we may have found some things on the home inspection, and we get ready to go to closing. And this is our final walkthrough? This is our final walkthrough. This is our final walkthrough. What are we looking for? So what we're looking for, we're looking for, and what I usually do, if there's an issue where there's some issues at the home inspection, then I do the walkthrough with the home inspector as well. Wow. So we do a re-inspection to walk wow, through to huge. make sure that all of those items that they, they were agreed upon to be fixed are fixed mm -hmm. and that the home is in the same condition as the very first time that we went and we saw the house. So if everything is great, then we move forward to closing. And if there's an issue, um, generally we work quickly with the seller to get that issue resolved. Walkthrough is important too, guys. Walkthrough is important. If you say, you know what, I like the house, I don't have to see it the day before closing. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. You want to do a walkthrough right before closing because somebody may have broken into their home, a pipe might have burst, or anything may have happened. So you definitely want to do a walkthrough. Refrigerator you... may be gone. Oh, the fridge... uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. I've seen it happen. The last thing you want to do is go to Southern and get those keys, and you show up at the property, and the door's kicked in, the window's broken, and all your appliances are missing, and the pipes have wow. been cut out your house. I'm sure. I'm telling you. I'm sure that could be a Because once you if you do a walkthrough and you find all that before closing, guess what? It's covered, guys. You don't have to close on that property. So, yeah. you know, it saves you some headache. It saves you some headache. So we're gonna do the walkthrough. We almost home. So we're almost home. So I wanna talk about one other thing though, uh -huh. before we get there, before we get to closing, because we before almost we closing. had closing. So one of the things that your loan officer will do when you um, actually find your house, you get a ratify contract, they'll give you an estimate and let you know um, based on that sales price uh -huh. about where your payments are going to be. There's some things that they can't be exactly accurate on, but they can give you a pretty good estimate um, as to about how much your payments are going to be and how much money you'll need. Now, the laws have recently changed. Well, in the last couple of years. The laws change so that um, at least three days prior to you going to closing, mm -hmm. we have to give you another estimate, okay? Um, and it's called an initial closing disclosure. You have to get that additional estimate um, because that locks the lender into their interest rate, to any fees that the lender has, so that you know that those items cannot change. Uh -huh. If That's those, if any of those fees change, um, before you go to closing, then we have to disclose to you again and wait another three days. Whoa. So, yes, and that's very important. And that law was put into place um, to protect the consumer because what was happening is, you know, during a time when, you know, everybody wasn't honest, 
um, people were changing <laughs> people's um, mortgage terms before they got to closing, right, right. Yeah, yeah, and people yeah, would right. be at closing with the with the truck outside yeah. with all their stuff in it, yeah, and then they get to closing and you know they need another two two thousand yeah. dollars. You should not be at closing and be two thousand dollars short. There's something wrong, yeah. right? right? Somebody did something wrong if you're short funds to close. You know, especially in excess of, you know, a few hundred dollars. If you're short by a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, something, something's wrong. So that estimate is done to protect the consumer, to make sure that before you go to closing, that you'll have a, another really good idea. It's still an estimate, but it's an even better estimate. That's sweet. And those final numbers, which everybody's always asking, Rhonda, do you have my final numbers? Those final numbers are derived after the lender gets all your paperwork together and sends your closing documents, a closing package to the title company and the title company and the lender kind of go back and forth to make sure that your final numbers are correct. Because a lot of times I see the initial final numbers and they're not right. I go through them with a fine tooth comb, know my, know my buyers pay for the appraisal, know they're not being charged this fee and I make sure that everything is right so we make sure everything is right before we give you those final numbers, okay? Now, a question is like, I know I'm, I'm closing. Should I go out and buy that new truck and that furniture for no. my time? Yes, if you want to live in it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to live in the truck. <laughs> So, 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 guys, <laughs> wait till you close to buy that furniture, right? Please, please, please. So, really, really quick story. My client, my client was getting ready to go to closing. We were probably about four or five days out um, side of closing. So, one very important thing: the lender does do an update on your credit. They don't. We don't actually order another full credit report, but we order like a modified version of that. So we'll see if you actually applied for anything or if wow. you've obtained any new credit and it needs to be addressed and it can hold up or <laughs> cancel out your closing. OK, so my client called me and he was um, no, no, no. I called him because I got that notice and it said that he had opened up a Best Buy account. And I was like, he did what? And so I called him. And I said, hey, um, I got a notice that you opened up. We're like four or five days from closing. I said, I got a notice that you opened up a Best, Best Buy account. And he said, yeah, Rhonda. You know, I went in there and they had this um, washer and dryer on sale. And it was a really good price. And I'm like, listen, I'm like, okay. And he said, you know, it was like the, you know, the ones that stand up on the floor and it got the drawers underneath. And, you know, they're never this cheap. And so I had to get it. And I said, okay. I said, well, um, I said, well, we got two choices here. Okay. You can, um, you can cancel out that account. You can take that wash and dry back. Well, I haven't got, gotten it yet, Rhonda. They're going to deliver it to the house. I said, you can call them and, and close that account and cancel that washer and dryer. And we can go to settlement next on week. Or you can keep it and see if it fits in the apartment because that's where it's going to be. So, <laughs> so I'm sure you all know the end of that story. He called and canceled that. But fortunately, we had that information um, enough time. ahead of time so that it did not delay his closing. But things like that. So make sure, make sure that you do not apply for anything, don't open any new accounts. I always tell my clients, just imagine that I have a camera and I'm taking a picture of your financial profile and everything looks like this. Don't change it. Don't start moving money out of this account, put it in this account, transferring and, you know, quit your jobs and oh yeah, they About quit their checks. jobs. They quit, yes, mm -hmm. they quit their jobs. Um, one lady said she was going to be a full-time student. She was going to get a stipend, so she quit her job. And so she didn't go to closing. Um, so, you know, if there's if there's any change in your job, because we know people, we don't want you to pass up on that good job offer, right? right? Just let us know so we can go back in and update that information so that it does not delay your closing. Sweet. 
sweet, sweet. Now, this whole process from the time I, I step into your office and the consultation and the pre approval mm -hmm, from you, mm -hmm. how long this whole process take? How long? How long? Give me a rough idea. How long? Is it? it it should take about thir thirty days. So okay. sometimes a little less. Um, sometimes if they're using um a special program, it may take maybe you know another week or so. Okay. But that's why we try to um get all that information up front so that we can by the time you find a house, we can just keep keep things moving. And then a lot of times it depends on the client. If the lender's asking them for information and there's a delay in getting it, you know, that could slow slow things up a bit. If the appraiser calls to try to get um, a day and time to go in and look at the house and they don't let them come in for another week, that could slow up things a bit. Okay, but it usually should, should take about 30 days. Guys, it's important that you get the lenders all those documents they need. That's that's why I see a lot of the hold up is yeah. you know, they send it over piece by piece instead of sending everything they need and they get mm -hmm. lenders gotta keep calling you over and over to ask you for those documents. I'm sorry. Oh, no. yeah. So we get the close. So we go to close, we get the keys, we do the walkthrough, we got anything else we need to know about that process? I can't think of anything right offhand. Man, so we got a new house now, huh? New house. We got it's ours? No. No? Yeah, go to close it. You gotta go to close it. You gotta go to close it. That's when all the fun and all the signing and everything. Pictures and everything. So yep, that's your final process. You go to close it. Closing what is closing? What what does the closing involve? What does closing involve? So um I'm probably one of the few lenders that attend my closings. Um because I just I just think yeah. I just think that um I've been working with my clients. And just me being there a lot of times just makes them feel better. I want them to know that I'm not hiding behind anything. Everything I've told you up to this point is true. And I'm here to make sure that everything is right. Mm -hmm. And I find that a lot of times um, there may be a question. The clients may have a question as it relates to their loan. And who's better suited to answer that than me? So at closing, all the documents that you signed with me, they're preliminary docs. Okay, so you're gonna get all those documents again. Oh, get your get your fingers ready, do all your finger exercises because you're gonna be signing <laughs> a lot of paperwork because it takes a lot of paper to get two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> it takes a lot. <laughs> yeah. So on on your half, what does the closing involve? Um, I also attend all my closings. So I am there to make my clients feel comfortable, answer any questions, and a lot of times they're nervous. So, you know, throughout the whole process, I'm there with them to hold their hands and give them comfort and to reassure them that, hey, I started with you and going to end with you. And give referrals. And so that's, where, like you said, that's a relationship you built for life, right? Yeah, that's a relationship that you for life you know they become your family and your friends and they call you to check on you and it's uh, it's just like you know the best thing ever building relationships absolutely cool cool and even more important than that a house is a home where families are made of and where they grow and that is the most important thing here in this universe is having families and growing. So you take part of that. So you yes. see, they send you pictures when they have babies. They send you invites when they're children or they're having special events. So it's just, you know, a beautiful thing to it experience is. with it somebody is. Is. and know that you play a part in that. Yes. Yes. Cool. So we're helping people. I love helping people. More people you help, the more money you make. So cool. If we want to get in touch with Rhonda and get some of these programs, how we get in touch with you, Rhonda Lewis? You can reach me in my office at 240-387-7136. I will be happy to talk to you. Cool. And you can help me get qualified so I can move into that house. Yes, of course. Sweet, sweet, Whenever sweet. you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> you got any questions before we leave? Anything you have missed? Anything you guys want to cover? Any questions out there? Go ahead and type them in the chat box. Does anybody have any questions? Absolutely. And this is actually being recorded. You can always go back and watch this anytime. Share this with your family and friends, anybody that you know is in the market. We appreciate you guys' time. But any questions, I know it's on delay. Go ahead and type your questions. Let's get your questions answered while we got the experts here. Absolutely. Yes. This, so was, this, is this was great. Yes. This is great. 
great. I was nervous, but I, I think I loosened up. I know. It's just like talking amongst friends. You talking amongst friends. With an audience. You talk, you got the expert, you're the expert. You're now it's really all. nervous when you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, now, yeah, right? yeah that's true. That's since true. Since you're the expert, it's piece of cake. Piece of cake. Well, I appreciate you guys joining us for this. Really this did. was this was great. Um, this uh, has really inspired me to. You know, um, I love getting the information out there because, you know, a lot of times people people don't know, you know, right. people don't know what to do. They don't know where to start. And then they get nervous and then they're scared because they don't know what the lender's going to tell them. And, you know, my clients joke, joke around and say, well, when you put my Social Security number in, the smoke's going <laughs> to come out. Smoke oh. has never come out ever, ever, ever. Can, can you, uh, with the Equifax and all this, mm -hmm. can you discuss how you how you got security work with the security issues in your office? How you secure their information? Well, we are we are bounded by law to um, protect our clients' information. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, we can't even leave out of our office with um, any any open files. Uh, we have secure bins. If there's any trash, we have to put them in. Um, secured and protected bins so that they can be picked up by an actual company. Um, we are we're not allowed to ride around with your information in our bags. Um, um, our computers, I mean, the security processes that they go through is, you know, tremendous. Nothing is ever, uh, you know, 100% fail-proof, but we go through great expense to protect to protect our clients' information. Guys, and keep that in mind too. A lot of times you want the uh, the uh, the agent or the the, um, the loan officer to meet you outside of their office. This is some of the reasons why they can't. They can't carry your information around. They just can't bring their information out in the public and have mm -hmm. it out available to everybody. Because what if I have their information in my car and I'm in an accident? Yeah. And my car is impounded, or you know, my car is sitting on the side of a road with your file in it. That's Ooh. that's not good. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. I never thought about that. No. Those can't get reaped in that. Yeah, you'd be like, and oh, you, you got all it. the files, no, and they go on no. through the car, and they've got your social, they got no. your credit bill. We can't do that. See, now Absolutely that's one not. of the reasons. So that's something good to know. So, guys, if you're looking for a really, really good real estate agent, what we got here, Harry? What's your info, Ms. Hawkins? Harry Hawkins at 240-229-1398, or you can reach me at my website at www dot harriet g hawkins at gmail dot com all right all right harriet g hawkins at gmail dot com so guys give us a call give us a call and don't forget we got Rhonda we got Rhonda in here we got all the information <laughs> we got the information there be in touch with us and we hope you enjoyed it we're gonna end with our song you know our song we want all our people around you. Yep. yep we want all our people around you. yep everybody living good Thank you for taking your time out right your day with the real estate happy hour. Go get you a happy hour drink. Mm. Even if it's mm. water. Mm. <laughs> I can see you. I can see you. So we hope you enjoyed it. we see you next week. We're going to have to get Ronnie here more often. I would love to. And for all the agents, I'm going to talk about the with you guys. And then we're going to talk about the agents. And then we're going to talk about the agents. And then we're going to talk about the agents. And then we're going to talk about the agents. And then we're going to talk about the agents. And then we're going to talk and we close in what? Seven days, six days? Close at the time of year for me. You want to close in seven days or close in seven? You want to close in 10, 20, 30 days? It's totally up to you. We're not going to put you at your house and rush you out. Guys, we appreciate you. Peace and love. We out. You get a peace love. Bye. <laughs>